there she is. Hi, Mary. Hello, Michelle. Hi, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Oh, I'm so excited to be collaborating with you. Me too, me too. So, Mary, do you want to just share with everybody who you are and a little bit about your story and what you do? I would sure love to. So my name is Mary Shores. I am an author, a speaker, and a CEO of one of the most unique collection agencies on the planet. So you heard that right. I am a Hay House author, which means that I'm a spiritual growth and development expert, but I also own a debt collection company. And so my career traditionally has been in the financial sectors much more than say in spiritual growth and development. And so the, but you know, I always hear these really glorious and wonderful interviews and people introduce me in these amazing, amazing ways. And it makes me seem like super successful and, and like something to look up to. But the truth is that my story didn't start off that way. So I was actually out on my own at 16 years old with, with no guidance and very little resources. I had, uh, I was only a senior in high school at that time. And I still managed to graduate high school and enroll in community college. And uh, from there, I actually had a child, very, very young. She passed away. She had severe brain damage. And then I turned around, and by the time I was 25, I started my first business called uh, Midstate Collections, which is the collection agency I own now, and w ended up being the youngest person in the world to open a collection agency. So it's just kind of like I say that to highlight that, you know, we get attached to these stories from our past. Like we get attached to these tragedies from our past, but the truth is you get to write your own story. Don't you think, Michelle? I absolutely do, totally. And that that's testament to such a strong, strong character. And I'm guessing some really dark times because what people see on the surface is the success, right? And they don't always understand what's happened and what's needed to happen underneath that to make it make it happen. And I guess it wasn't yeah. always easy for you. No, not at all. But the thing is, like, um, you know, you were talking about mindset in your introduction and talking about, like, I think that people can get drowning in these stories because the truth is that the story you tell yourself about yourself will become your identity. And so for me, it was just really important to always connect with the part of my story that was more about the triumph over the tragedy. And so what I mean by that is like connect yourself more to the triumphs over the tragedy and just remember that you are creating your story every day every single day it's re a renewed chance to tell a new story and the most beautiful part of your story is in fact how you moved on yeah <laughs> and often the challenges that you had to face and overcome to become who you needed to become are often the things that help people the most when you share those vulnerabilities and when you actually overcome them you can help other people too as well so they're actually our power aren't they sure and i think that there's two ways to do that because there's one way of when you tell your story in that you're a victim of the story and then there's another way where you where you share the story but you're highlighting and you're focused on the triumphant part of the story so it's mm -hmm. like one way makes you a victim one way makes you empowered and do you understand there's like a the fine line in between the two? So I always just chose, not always, but you know, certainly to become successful, needed to choose the route of the empowerment. Mm -hmm. And what sort of thought processes or techniques or I guess disciplines, habits, what had to become your way of life, your normal, to be able to think like that. So I know if there's people listening that think, oh, but how do I do that? How, how do I get to that place? You know, I just gave a talk the other day at the University of Illinois, which is a Big Ten school here in the U.S., and it was a, it was a huge honor to give this talk that was all about business leadership. And I decided to share seven pieces of wisdom that I had learned over my 20 plus years as an entrepreneur. And so one of them is like the ability to always be taking action and execute. 
You know, so I think that lots of people have tons of ideas, but they never really do anything with them. But when you have, when you take action, when you understand the power of, of execution and where you have a well thought out plan, which can be really easy to do if you are, so to speak, like creating a one page action plan, which is something that I share in my book and in, in multiple blogs, but you're just taking the end result that you're looking for and you reverse engineer by asking yourself, for example, one of the questions I would ask myself, like when I wanted to publish with Hay House, it's like, what are six things that need to be true in order to obtain this end result? And then you just fill that in with bullet points and then you unpack it from there. So I would say that one of the things in my life that has certainly set me apart from other people is the ability to always execute. Despite what's going on around you, despite what life throws at you, just focus and execute. So, you know, that's a really interesting question because the truth is, and especially as entrepreneurs, you know, I think that sometimes there's this pressure to always look and seem successful no matter what. And a lot of times I find that entrepreneurs especially will hide the inner stress that they're going through. You know, they don't feel as much permission to share their struggles. But the truth is that entrepreneurs have, I think, more stress than anyone because a lot of things are always riding on them. And a lot of things feel like level 10 stresses. And so I would say that my personal method of execution during the darker times is just become always move something forward. So, you know, if I've got seven projects going on at once, which is not unusual for me, it's just saying, what can I move forward today? Because you also don't want to, you know, when you're, especially if you're a female entrepreneur, what can happen is once you get to about 20 years of doing that, your adrenals can start to become affected. So if you're just going, going, going all the time, which I'm no stranger to, and I'm certainly no stranger to now, then we don't understand the impact that that's having on our hormones and just on our body, the damage that it causes. So like if I were to give a young entrepreneur advice, I would say really take care of yourself during those times when you're struggling and just don't beat yourself up for not getting everything done, but be grateful for the one thing you could move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's about striving for progress rather than perfection all of the time because striving for perfection and to get everything done and everything right all of the time is exhausting yeah, yeah switching to progress is much healthier we talked a bit about forgiveness when we chatted last didn't we and we i did. know you wanted to share some I, insights which i thought was really interesting and i know that a lot of people will get a lot from so you, you were going to speak then go for it yeah well and i also um, i want to say I want to say hello to my sister Kathy who looks like um, according to the screen it says that my sister Kathy is watching so if okay. she's still watching I just want to say hello to her and oh and now my sister-in-law is watching so I'm going to say oh, wow. hi Amy. family <laughs> and um, I also saw one of my cousins who I've actually never met but who found me on Facebook and sent me a friend request her name is Ashley and it looks like she's watching so I just wanted to Say hello to those of you who are watching. All right, let me talk to you about forgiveness, but I'm going to back up just for a second before I get to the forgiveness piece. And I want to talk about 2018. Like I really have this strong feeling about 2018 being this amazing year for everyone. Oh, and hi, it's my partner, Cheryl. My partner in the UK is watching. Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> 2018 has this potential to be this amazing year of unconditional love, prosperity, and security. And I'm so all about this concept because I learned about it on a meditation retreat over New Year's, and I just can't stop thinking about it. And when I'm talking about unconditional love, I'm really meaning love of yourself and to get there by way of gratitude. So taking a moment to be grateful for all of your gifts, whatever they may be. And I don't mean the things you have. I mean the things you are. So are you a wonderful teacher? Are you an amazing cook, an amazing mother? My sister who's watching live, she is amazing with the elderly. Like I could never, she just has this gift with the elderly. And that's her gift. And so if you can step back, 
and be grateful for your gifts, then it's those gifts that are going to grow in your life and become this platform, become this foundation of what will be your prosperity this year. Because when you're grateful for those gifts, what's going to happen is you're going to draw more opportunities to you that allow you to use those gifts. And also when you add these two things together, this um, amazing part of your gifts that becomes your prosperity, the result of that is security. Because when we think about security, it means that we don't want to have fear. We need to remove these fears. We need to explode what no longer serves us. We need to get rid of the judgment in our lives. We need to get rid of envy. You know, I could easily compare myself to you or to someone else and think, oh, you know, I'll never be as good as they are. But my gifts are not the same as your gifts. And so I can celebrate your gifts and celebrate my own gifts and they don't they're not in competition with each other we talked about that a little bit last week the other day and like how amazing it is to collaborate with someone versus compete and here's where this forgiveness piece comes in because i talk about a lot the concept of alignment and when i really started going down this more spiritual path um, more of a path towards true self-actualization, I started to wonder about this concept I would hear all the time, alignment. And it actually was very confusing to me until I, I really boiled it down to like getting your, your words, your thoughts, your actions in alignment with what you want. And then now this year, I'm finding out it's so much deeper than that because you can't really be in alignment if you have not forgiven yourself. So when we're talking about forgiveness, and that was the thing I really wanted to talk about today with your friends, is that we need to forgive ourselves. We need to make a list, and this is hard to do, okay? But like seriously, making a list of all of the unforgivable things you feel like you've done in the past. Because I assure you that there is something in there that you have not forgiven yourself for but that thing that happened 10 years ago 20 years ago it is causing this sort of mental uh, barrier mm -hmm. and and it's causing a feeling of unworthiness and shame and you may not walk around every day saying oh you know i'm i'm unworthy but what happens is when you see an opportunity you know, maybe there's this opportunity and you think, I don't really, I, you don't go for it. There's something that holds you back. There's something that keeps you from, from pushing the trigger. My son told me the other day, he said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And that's really true. So take the shot and, and know that when you look at these things that you perceive to be unforgivable, that it's only unforgivable because you're measuring it against your own set of morals and values that you developed in childhood, mm -hmm. right? So we kind of grew up with this set of beliefs and we're sort of at this time that we need to break down those beliefs because those beliefs are not serving you if they're keeping you down. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at these things that are unforgivable, just know that there's truly nothing that's unforgivable that you could have done. And I guess it's recognising that we're always working with the tools and the resources that we have available to us at that time. And, you know, if you go back and there's things that you would have done differently, things that you beat yourself up for, it's being a little bit nicer to yourself, I guess, a little bit more obviously forgiving, but a bit a bit kinder to you. And when, when someone's got this on paper, Mary, and they've done that work and they're like, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to see if there are some things in there that I need to lift and shift. Then writing it down on paper, is that the first step? Is that is that going to help just understanding what's there and, and what they're holding on to? So this is, this is more than just saying the words. This is more than just telling yourself. Because, you know, we all know what how it feels when you're struggling and you're like, okay, I, I forgive my mother, my brother. I forgive my spouse. But did you really forgive them or did you just say the words? So I'm going to caution you that this is not an easy task, okay? Because true forgiveness is when you actually release it from your body. It's not just about saying the words. It's like, that's why I'm telling you to look at the fact that the reason you can't forgive yourself 
is is not necessarily because it's unforgivable it's because you're you're comparing it you're measuring it against your own morals and values and so mm -hmm. here's the thing that i want to say about that is that your morals and values are you know built up on your on your childhood but that we have to be able to release this from our body so it's more than just saying the words it's really looking at that. And then you brought up the word mistakes, which is very good because the thing about mistakes and we've all made them that mistakes are your greatest teachers. You're not, you know, we, we sort of, a lot of people in like my area of the United States, a lot of them grew up, the, the majority of the percentage grew up Christian in a Christian household. And in a Christian household, you might have been taught that you were born a sinner and that you were born into original sin and we were taught that we had to pray for forgiveness but what the person who we really need forgiveness from is ourselves we need to forgive ourselves because whatever else is out there has long since forgotten about this there there's no time that we're gonna you know stand in front of the high court and have to explain our actions because the truth is that you made that mistake so that it would serve you later in life for some other reason you couldn't have learned the lessons. If, if we were born to be perfect, then we would have no reason to be here because there would be nothing to learn. So we need to How be boring with that thing. I can't even imagine it. So that thing <laughs> that I did, the truth is that I learned from that mistake. And those mistakes made me who I am today. And I couldn't be, I couldn't be standing in front of people and doing what I'm doing without having made those mistakes in my past. I can't truly serve the world if I was perfect. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's about recognizing things you might be blaming and holding on to, but then recognizing the good things that came from them, the lessons, the, you know, you can blame, but if you're gonna blame, I know that um, one of my idols, Tony Robbins says this all the time, mm -hmm. if you're gonna blame, you've gotta blame the shit out of everything. You, know, you can't just blame the bad. You right. gotta blame the good too. And I get I guess that's what you're saying. You know, it's the lessons, it's the value that comes from those mistakes as we see them. Yeah, what if what if you could actually be grateful for your mistakes? Because, you know, a lot of us when we make a mistake, we make sure that we're not gonna make that same mistake again. Or maybe we make that same mistake over and over and over because we just keep getting the opportunity over and over in our lives until we can, until we can rewrite our story, you know, until we can get it right. And so just know that the mistakes you've made, if you can, the mistakes you've made are a result of your own morals. So when you do something that's outside of your morals, you will crucify yourself, you know, so more if, than anyone else would. <laughs> more than anyone else would but there, there's a bigger there's a bigger teaching here in that in order to get into true alignment in order to really meet the goals to go to the next level you have to internally in your body know that you deserve whatever that level is you know and and if you don't feel it breathe it know it in every cell of your body then there's something that's keeping you there. And what I'm suggesting is that one of those steps is to forgive yourself. Another one of those steps is to look at your gifts, your talents. Like I mentioned, my sister uh, being really, just has this magical ability with the elderly people. And if she were to say every day, I'm so grateful for this ability that I have to connect to the elderly. I'm so grateful at what I can provide for them at their end stages of life. Then if we can do that, that gift will grow and expand. It's like expand in your life and that gift will support you because that's what you were meant to do. You know, we, we are in this space where I feel like every other person is talking about purpose so I've started calling it the big P word, the big P word, purpose. Like your purpose is this elusive thing that's behind the magic curtain and you can't see it or touch it unless you pay someone like thousands of dollars to tell you your purpose. But the <laughs> truth is that your purpose is what's inside you. Your purpose is the thing that you do better than anyone else you know. 
And so whether that's writing, speaking, teaching, whether you're a fitness instructor, a yoga teacher, whether you are an accountant, whether you're a, a lifeguard, whatever it is, whether you are a baker, whether you are a mom, that is your gift, that is your purpose, that is what you are here to do and you need to figure out, your only job is to figure out how do you do that in your career? How do you bring that? Because that's how you will truly serve the world. Yeah, absolutely. It's more about living a purposeful life than it is about finding your purpose, right? So the every intention has a purpose, a purpose to have a positive, positive impact on you and the people around you. And when you can find a career like you're describing, it, it's not about, I think a lot of people get so caught up like you're describing in, you know, curing cancer or ending famine or, you know, it's got to be this big purpose that they have to right. find that they're meant to do. And actually it doesn't, you know, we can relax a little bit. It doesn't need to be that huge of a task to find it, does it? It just has to be something that makes us feel good and that serves people, right? And yes. And something that you're naturally good at. So with my own, with my own sort of, sort of story, you know, here I, had this career as, I have this career as a debt collector, but I started, I was really more interested in my spiritual path. And I was worried, Michelle, I had this existential crisis. I mean, this was a real problem because how was mm -hmm. I going to pursue a spiritual path? How was I going to pursue a path of spiritual and growth development, personal development, if I was a debt collector? Because I felt like, the debt collectors have such a negative stigma onto them because there's a lot that they're doing for, you know, to bring, to keep people down. And my mission was that I want people to feel good about paying their debt because having a debt is a burden. And so when I was able to realize, wait a minute, that is my gift. That is my gift. That is my purpose. All I need to do is create a system of how to do that. And then I was able to take that system and bring it and to transform the entire industry so that it's not just my company doing this, but hey, this became an opportunity for number one, for me to make money, but number two, for me to make a dent in the collective consciousness by way of changing the tactics that the, the debt collectors use, because I know I can do that now. But then like, Look at how that exploded. Now I have a best-selling book. You know, now I'm out there like helping other aspiring authors to teach them how to write a proposal, to teach them, you know, lots and lots of things and get to collaborate with other amazing people like yourself. And it's just like, I, you know, I'm just so grateful for all that has happened. Do you know, you just hit on such an important point because I know I speak to ladies all of the time and they think, you know, to find my purpose or to live out my purpose, I'm going to have to give something up. But what you're describing is finding the purpose in what you're already doing and aligning yourself with that, you know, right. working out what it is. Can I, what can I do right now in what I'm doing to make a really positive impact? Because like you said, debt collection would be something that you could, you know, some people would think, well, I have to move away from that in order to, to serve and make, you know, make a difference. Actually, you found a way to make a difference to people that were probably not feeling great financially, emotionally. And rather than abandoning that ship and thinking, I'm going to go off in this direction, you found a way to serve in that community, which is brilliant. And I think that's such a good point. And, you know, it's so when I first discovered this, because I did, like, just like you said, when you're talking to friends and I'm sure some of your clients and they're worried about having to give something up, I did have that fear Michelle, if I'm being really honest, I was terrified that I was going to have to give up my career because I'm a single mom. I have a special needs child. You know, I didn't know how I was going to make it if I wasn't a debt collector because that's what I've done my whole life. So I was on a trip at Omega Institute, which is a place that I love. It's a retreat center in the Hudson Valley, New York. And I met this woman and I was talking to her about this problem. And she said, don't you see? She said, when people have a debt in this lifetime, it's really the equivalent of a karma. It's a karma that perhaps it's a karma that they've even come into this life with. 
And she said, every time you help them to solve this debt problem, every time you help them to feel good about paying their debt, she said, you're actually clearing your karma, their karma. And she said, in exchange, it's clearing my own karma. And when she said that, Michelle, it was like, whoa. I mean, wow. I went back to my office and I just told the entire staff, I said, okay, we are now karmic debt collectors. <laughs> and Amazing. <laughs> I, there's a section in my book, uh, there's a little subsection that tells this story and it's actually called karmic debt collections. But think about that. So okay, when you, brilliant. but like, this isn't about collections, right? Because I'm probably the only debt collector watching right now. So, but it's <laughs> when you use your gift to serve, then you are clearing karma. You are clearing out your own, your, it's like you're taking a vacuum cleaner, like sticking it on your head and like sucking out the bad. Just like, that's a really great visual, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I get silly sometimes. I want to say hello to John, John Duffy, and I want to plug his podcast. Um, John has this amazing, amazing podcast called Undo Anxiety. And um, to this day, I've been on 125 podcasts, and probably in my top three is the, one, the episode I did with John Duffy for Undo Anxiety. Okay. I need to check that out. I've I, not should, watched any of his podcasts. You should send him a pitch and go on his show. <laughs> hey, John, let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So tell me one last question and then I'll let you go. Um, conscious communications. Now, when, I, when we first connected and we started chatting, it was a new concept to me. I've not heard that term or phrase or, and I had a look at your book online, obviously, but what, Tell us, like, if you can, in a snapshot, what is conscious communication? What can people learn from your book? Because I, I already know the answer to this, but I feel it'd be much better if you describe that because sure. you're the expert. So uh, the book, first of all, is my biggest dream come true in life ever because, okay. Okay. I mean, I just were, I don't even, I have not found the words yet to describe what it feels like to hold my book in my hand and... Um, Conscious Communications is a guidebook. It's a step-by-step -step process to teach people how to harness the power of their words to change their mind, their choices, and their life. And I don't want someone to get the wrong idea that this is a book that's all about creating affirmations because it's so much more than that. You know, it goes through a process where each chapter builds on the last one, where you're going to uncover the things in your life about yourself that you should be grateful for. You're going to understand the way that your nervous system works. You're going to understand the way that certain words trigger trigger you or certain events in your life will trigger you into fight or flight and what to do when that happens. You're going to learn a little process that I love. Um, everyone loves this process. It's called cleanse or clog. So it's all about like when you're, when you're faced with making choices and you have a goal in mind, it's like you, you understand that every choice you make and every thin sliced moment in life is actually creating your world around you like an architect. And so if you just ask yourself, if I do this thing, will it cleanse me or will it clog me? And you can do that for a month or two. You'll just start to see everything around you change. Because what I'm really saying is that everything you do is either creating a deeper connection or it's driving a disconnection. And it's connecting you or disconnecting you from your truest, your truest desires in life. So that's just a little, that's just a little bit of it. And, and, um, yes, I'm so excited to read it. I got, I ordered my copy after we spoke last week, but the island that I live on is awful for post. So <laughs> I could get it anywhere between three weeks and three months away. <laughs> but as soon as I've got it, I'll let you know. Yeah. But, um, Mary, I just want to, I want to finish by saying I absolutely honor you for what you've done and, and what you've created and, and everything, but more importantly, the impacts that you're making in the world. And thank you so much for coming on tonight and sharing your knowledge and insights for this group. We appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. I look forward to uh, talking to you again. Absolutely. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye.
Hey, this is Mary. Thanks so much for watching. Check out a free chapter of my book, Conscious Communications, at maryshores.com forward slash free chapter. The link is in the description below.